Um, <laughs> I know you have explained Sorry, this Martha. before. I know you've explained this before, but a couple of folks, uh, folks have asked me over the last couple of days. Flattening the curve. We've all heard that term. Flatten the curve. Is is flatten the curve? Is it meant to reduce the number of coronavirus cases, or to extend the number of coronavirus cases? Well, the the overall goal is to reduce the number of cases, but what that will end up doing is, you know, people are going to eventually get exposed to the virus. We want it. The more we can control it, the fewer people at once, the more people will have kind of what we call that herd immunity where they're less likely to get as sick. So the goal is to lower the number of cases we see every day and then kind of push that um, the number of cases out for a longer period of time. So is flattening that, the curve, we had, we, had, pardon me, we, we had Dr. Gali on from LSUHSC just a couple of days ago. Right. And, and he said that, uh, he said there's plenty of room at that hospital. How's about the others? What do you hear about that? Actually, we are in a good position for, um, for beds. Um, never had an issue with hospital beds itself. The um, only issue we got close to having problems with were ICU beds, but all of our hospitals have made plans and, and created space for ICU beds, <clears throat> which luckily we haven't needed to expand. So we're, we're doing well right now with so that. So flattening the curve is, is working, I guess, huh? It is working. We, we're, we're doing a good job. We need to um, now figure out how we're going to start kind of trying to get back to some sense of normalcy and not have another big peak of cases. You you participated in the news conference with the sheriff and the mayor and others yesterday, you know, kind of given an overall update. What is your top message to folks today? Well, my biggest message is, realize that as tired as we all are of these restrictions, they were put in place for a reason and we don't want to release everything too quickly so that we have what we call a second wave. We know um, if you look throughout history at pandemics and, um, you know, new viral infections, which we've had several of before, when you release things too quickly and you get that second wave, it's always worse than the first. And you've seen how bad this first wave is. We don't want a worse second wave. So we want to be smart and and how we're going to let people back <laughs> out and doing the things that we all want to get back to doing. Nobody wants us to stay like this for long. We just want to be smart about how we uh, relax those restrictions. And the governor is ordering folks to wear masks in public. Is that a big part of it? Will that help? You know, I, I do believe it will help. I think that we have to make sure people realize how to wear them. Um, you can't keep um, covering and uncovering your face with the same mask when you hang it on your chest. All of that filtered dirty air is on the outside of that mask, and now it's right by your mouth that you're starting and you're breathing it in. So, you know, people who do that, that makes me crazy. If you're so, gonna, so what do you do? Off, what do you do with them? The take, off. take it off, rather than drop it down. It off, take it all the way off. Make sure you try to limit how much you touch the outside of that face mask, and you, you pull it off by the the strings, and then hang it <laughs> so that it's not the outside's not touching anything so that you can reuse it unless it's been soiled wash your hands when you take it off and then you're good you can use it again just don't leave it hanging on your chest don't pull it down on your chin don't um pull it out uh, you know your nose out of it doesn't do you any good and in fact it's, it's more dangerous for you to wear it that way should i leave just, my pull mask pulled up over my nose when i'm in my car you actually, if it's just you in your car by yourself, you don't have to wear a mask. <laughs> so that, you know, well, have I'm to seeing wear a lot gloves. of scary people driving down the road. I, mean, I know. And you don't, you don't need to do that when you're by yourself. Really. You just 
need to um, do it when you're out in public around a lot of people. You still need to social distance. They're not 100%, especially those cute little cloth masks that everybody's made and so many good companies and people have volunteered and so many of them they're great but they're not a hundred percent they're about 70 percent protective so it's still better than nothing 70 percent is pretty good you just can't not social distance while you're wearing them i had asked you a long time ago well it seems like a long time ago i had asked you a while back i said do most people infect themselves because somebody coughs or sneezes or to use aaron's term sputums on them or are most people <laughs> infecting themselves rub your eye pick your nose bite your nails and you said most people infect themselves is is that still is that still what you say that's still what i say and, and what, what I don't want to see is people infecting themselves with these masks. The reason why we want to go to masks are we know people are going out when they're not well. If we're all wearing masks, those people are wearing a mask and they're protecting other people. Also, we're not exactly sure when exactly you become infectious. There's a lot of questions about asymptomatic transmission. We haven't really been able to prove that, but in case there is, it's that this way we know we're protected. They're Do doing a lot of research on that, but it, but we don't know for sure. Dr. White, with this big May 1st date hovering above our heads, what as that date comes and approaches and things go back, op some things open back up, what are you watching for the closest. I know data is scrambling around, scrambling around in your head, but what are you going to be looking at the closest? So we're going to be looking at, you know, test. Who's testing positive? Are we seeing an uptick in tests? Are we seeing an uptick in hospital ER visits, hospital admissions? All of the things that we've been monitoring now, which we're seeing decrease. We want to make sure we don't see those climb back. Now, you know it's going to take a good 14 days or so for us to truly see whether we're going to see an uptick in that. A lot of times people will start getting infected after a week or so, but it's really that two weeks that's going to show us whether being out and about for that first phase has made a difference. 